Hey everybody, I just want to let you know that the interview you're about to watch is impactful. It is full of writable ideas that I really want you to get a pen and paper before you sit down and press play on this because there are so many truth bombs in this particular interview that I want you to write them down and furthermore, figure out how to apply them. And after this video, if you are inclined, I would invite you to reach out to me for a private kick-ass consulting call and just talk about without a sales pitch or anything, just how I can help you get through this time because that's what this is about. So just reach out to me and uh, I apologize. We could not get his video working due to connectivity issues in India. Uh, so I apologize for that. It's on audio, but uh, rest assured it is amazing content and I trust you to apply it. All right, reach out afterwards. I love you guys. Enjoy the show. Peace. Unstoppable kick-ass confidence. Are you ready? Welcome to the Raw and Unscripted Show with Christopher Roush, where we help you overcome your self-created crap without the self-help fluffy bullshit. Now please welcome our host, Christopher Roush. Everybody, welcome back to another... Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Raw and Unscripted with yours truly, Christopher Roush, the place where I help you overcome your self-created crap. And yes, indeed, it is your self-created crap. Recently, I had somebody kind of argue with that statement. They said, Chris, what do you mean by self-created crap? And I simply said, well, there's a lot of things that go on in our brains. I can't say that we create all of it, but we do actually keep minding over it. We keep mulling over it. We keep thinking about stuff that happened 20 years ago. And then we give ideas and meanings to those things. So yeah, it is your self-created crap. What you got to do is you got to undo it. You got to unpack it and you got to get unstoppable and you got to get with no excuses. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got an exciting show for you today. I'm pleased to bring on with me in just a few minutes here. Um, a man that I've got to know very closely and over the uh, period of time that I've known him for probably several years, six, seven years, I think it is something like that. Um, has just become a, a dear friend of mine. And I'm happy to say that he's not here in the United States. I have been making friends from all over the world as I've been sharing with you guys. And I'm proud to say he's from India. And the, the friendship that we've cultivated over that time, the people he's introduced me to, the people I've got to know as friends here on Facebook have been phenomenal. And I, and I say that because some people have a closed mind of what other countries are like. And so I, I feel proud to know that I have somebody who is a mover and a shaker in another part of the world who is doing the same things I'm doing, who's creating the same vibes, who is bringing the value every single day, every single conversation he brings that to his people in his mastermind, the people he speaks to from stage, the people he coaches. He is a remarkable individual. He's got a great personal story. He's got lots of tips to be sharing with you. So I want you guys to make sure if you don't have it, and you should have it when you're always watching the Ron and Scripted show or listening to it, is a pen and paper. Because what we try to really do is deliver valuable, tangible, actionable items that you can start working on today to change your mindset, to change the outcome of your, your results that you're getting. That's what this is about. This is not about any excuses. This is not about fluffy bullshit. As you heard me say in the intro, this is about really taking it seriously, especially this time in our world. I mean, at the time of this airing, we're still going through the pandemic here in April of 2020. And I got to tell you, there are going to be two people that come out of the situation as it is right now, I believe. I believe people are going to come out stronger than they were before, whether they were weak before or they're going to become stronger now. People that may have been weaker or stronger before may come out of this weaker. But I got to tell you, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm dead fucking serious with this, it is up to you to decide what you are going to do, what choices you are going to make in these days, in these hours. If you have watched more Netflix than you have ever in your entire life, but you haven't grown, you haven't watched YouTube videos, you haven't been listening to podcasts, I implore you, please start enriching your mind. Start learning things today. Get your family involved in stuff. Try to figure out what the next step is, what the new, whatever it is. Like for me, what would be the new Chris? What am I going to do? It's going to be responsible on your shoulders to make this happen. I can't do it for the, you. Nobody else can make it do it for you. What you have to do is you have to see the pain. You have to see the ultimate pain of staying the same versus changing. And we're going to talk about that today. So I'm pleased to bring on to my show, the very kick-ass 
Bishal Sakar, and he is live with us from India. Well, as of this recording, he's live with us from India. And unfortunately, due to internet connectivity issues, we cannot bring him on camera. But Bishal, are you there with us today? Yes, I am. Good How are to you, Chris? hear your voice. I would love to see Absolutely. you. Good to hear your voice. What's going on, Mr. Kickass? Oh, going good, man. Just pumped up, doing good, doing better, doing best, and sometimes even better than that. Nice, nice. Hey, I want to start off. I was kind of doing the lead into the show, just talking about yeah. what's going on with the pandemic at the time of this airing. Talk to us a little bit what's going on over there in India, because I don't know if people are necessarily paying attention to what's going on in other countries, but I would love to get your perspective of what's going on sure. over there and kind of share with the world what's, uh, what's your perspective on all of this. I think if you look at it, everything is always the same or and everything is always changing. What I mean by that is right now, as of the time of the recording, we have a lockdown in India. But look, there are two kinds of people always people who panic and people who practice. So, of course, there is time when because of the virus, you have to stay at home, you have to take better care of yourself and all that. But at the same time, um, people have you know, the tendency to panic. They are panicking about their future. Oh my God, is there a recession coming just like 2008, 2009? Is there a Great Depression coming? They are panicking and because of the panic state, as Willie Jolly says, you're not able to make the right decision. You're not able to take any action that's gonna move you forward. And then there is the, the second category of people, people who practice. They are doing the personal practices, they're investing in coaches, they're learning, they're growing, they're listening to podcasts, they're creating, they're being the artists are being the victor instead of being the victim in life and i think all of us the people who are listening to the show they believe in you know being in that in that arena of the practice and i think it's it's not about just in this time of coronavirus i mean if you look at chris any time whether it's 2018 2017 2025 2035 uh, it's it's all about your mindset and focus. And that's why I respect you so much because you inspire people to have a cast mindset. And I, I work with people to create their confident life and their balanced life. It's all about where you're putting your focus on. You can look at, you know, I think uh, I was I was at a at an at a conference a couple of um, months ago in New Delhi in India. And I was talking to one of the speakers and he said something that I never forget. He said, and it doesn't matter if you believe in God or a statue, he said, if you believe in God or not, it doesn't matter. If you see the rock, you'll never see the God in this. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you see the God, you'll never see the rock in that. In the same way, when it comes to life, a challenge, pandemic, epidemic, whatever demic can, and any challenge, if you see the opportunity, you'll not see the panic. But if you see the panic, you'll not see the opportunity. Mm. Beautifully said, beautifully said. What do you, what kind of advice do you give to people who have just naturally always seen yeah. the panic in things? I think it's, it's all about your, your social surrounding. Chris, anybody, uh, whatever belief system you have, it's because of your social conditioning. The, I mean, the, the best way to change that is change the people that you're hanging around with right now. I mean, we have seen enough emails. We have seen uh, Facebook ads. We have seen WhatsApp status from people who are just spreading the negativity. You have to be in good circles where people talking about opportunities, where they're not just being woo woo positive, but they're actually talking about good shit. I was just on a call with my, my friend Mike Kitko, who's an ex-Marine from USA, and we were having a conversation, and we did not talk at all about virus and panic and all that. We are talking about, you know, tell me what you're doing to improve your mindset. Tell me what you're doing right now to improve your health. Tell me what you're doing for your relationship. What about your sexuality? What about your spirituality? It's all about that growth mindset, right? So people, I mean, if there is somebody who's listening, no matter when, if you are having a panic thing, ask yourself why, because there is one thing that's for sure, Chris. And I was having this conversation with my friend, Mike. He said, we always find some way to fuck up our mindset because we fear happiness, we fear freedom. Chris, we don't fear suffering because we know how to suffer. We fear happiness, we fear light because we don't know how to be happy and how to have that light. So I encourage people to you know find the environment where you are getting enough light, where their positivity tells you that how the fuck is he so positive even though he's going through so much shit, right? Somebody like you, somebody when, when somebody comes to your comes, comes into your presence, they feel, oh my God, how is he so happy? How is he so kick-ass? Because mm -hmm. you're actually, you have, you're doing the work, inside work, the inner work to feel that. So number one, hang out with the right people. Number two, garbage in, garbage out. I call it GIGO, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. What kind mm -hmm. of audio programs are you listening to? Are you just watching the news or are you actually creating news right now? I mean, look at Christopher, he's creating, he's interviewing great people. 
is creating the number one speaker in the world, Bishal Sarkar, right now. And mm -hmm. the thing is, what he's doing right now is he's creating. So I encourage people to to find the find the find the gift in the garbage. You know, mm, what's the gift here? And yeah, find the gift in the garbage. And and I think it's time for people to actually reset. My friend Eli Wild was talking about. He said it's not quarantine; it's a mindset recent team. It's the time for you to reset your life, reset your health. So I encourage people to get busy instead of getting lazy in the news right now. Ooh, find your gift in the garbage. I am writing that down. I love that. You know, um, one thing that I found, Bashal, is that talking to people, they'll they'll tell me they're like, Chris, I love your message and I love the yeah. positivity and I love how you make it seem so easy. And I'm like, you know what? It's not easy. It's a fight. It's a struggle. Some days you have to go moment to moment. Yeah. Trust me. Right. Um, you have to go moment to moment. What do you, and, and I find out and I'll ask them the question. It's, it's a, such a very poignant question. And I do this in, in a lot of different conversations, but when I, especially when somebody's just talking about and their excuses and they're, they're in their, their victimhood. And I say, do you actually believe you deserve happiness? Hmm. Or I'll say it's something somewhere different. I'll say, um, who is the most important person in your life, including yourself? Mm. And probably 60, 70% of the people will say, oh, it's my husband. Oh, it's my kids. Oh, it's my parents. Um, oh, it's, um, you know, whoever, my sister. And I sit there and ask them, I said, what about you? Mm. Can you talk to us about the people that don't see that they should be first in their lives to be able to, to make the necessary changes to have that unstoppable mindset? Yeah, I think it comes down to your your self image because I'll tell you about India because I work with a lot of project managers, entrepreneurs, IT professionals. You know, they come to me to learn public speaking, then they join the Balanced Life Mastermind, which is not for everybody. That you know, and you have been a speaker at the Balanced Life Mastermind, mm -hmm. inspiring people too. It's a small group of very elite level people who are really um, committed to living a great life. And one thing I see is, especially in Indian culture. Um, taking good care of you is seen something as very selfish. And I know it's, it's mm. everywhere too. Oh, yeah. uh, but I often hear this line from people, I put my family first. And I tell them because you're an idiot. <laughs> you got to put yourself first. It's the same analogy of, about the oxygen mask. If you don't take care of yourself, if I, if I don't have 100 bucks, how can I give you 100 bucks? If I have not loved myself, if I've not taken good care of myself, if I have not, I mean, it's the basic thing my mentor um, Jeremy Eugene Wilson, when I was having conversation with him in 2016 for the first time, and I paid him a lot of money. And the first question on the first coaching call he asked me is this, how much water are you drinking every day? I was yeah. like, I paid him, I paid him so much money to ask me that question. Is it because <laughs> Michelle, you got to honor your body. You got to discipline your mind. You got to nurture your emotion. You got to serve the society. You got to expand your prosperity. And then you're going to shine your soul on fire in that specific order. So I think it's very important time for people to take better care of themselves. And it's always all the time because the, a chain is only only as strong as its weakest link. If your weakest link is your health, your mindset, and you're walking like a dead fish, you can't take better care of your child. You can't provide the inspiration to your spouse. You can't lead your team in a better way. So I think it's about flooding your mind with powerful thoughts. And, and look, I understand that. Sometimes people don't take good care of themselves. They are not putting themselves first. Um, Rome was not built in a day. So it's not gonna change in a day, but, but if you start taking small little action, um, I call it an appointment with yourself. You know, so often it's funny. Uh, often, oftentimes when I, you know, accept people inside the Balanced Life Mastermind, which is again not for everybody, but I often tell them, show me your calendar, and they show me all this, you know, Google Calendar, this this blue, you know, box and the green mm -hmm. box and all this, you know, appointment with the doctor, appointment with this and the team meeting and the dinner, and I say, where is time with you? Where yeah. is the Christopher's mm -hmm. appointment with Christopher? It's like you know, I just. And they tell me, well, my me time is when I'm walking the dog. I said, that's the dog time. So my me time is the gym time. As that's the work workout time. There has to be some time when you have the three S, solitude, stillness, and silence. Solitude, solitude stillness, stillness silence. silence. And it can be as powerful as seven to 12 minutes of you sitting down and you have 5,000 things going on in your head, but you're, but you're alone, solitude. You are still, you're not listening to any podcast, no audio, no motivational thing, and you're still, and you're silent, right? Great things come from there, because at that time, you really understand who you are, and you remind yourself, and I want you to emphasize yourself on the word, remind, remind yourself 
about the power that you have so that you remember you become a member again of the thought that's how powerful you are and once you have that power and that confidence guess what you don't have stage fear in a presentation right. you don't have problem when doing a sales call if you're in sales you don't have a problem doing a conference call you don't have problem making a tough decision because you're going to be powerful within so i think i think self care is is not a reward self care is something that has to be a some you know it's Something it's uh, almost like a criteria it's mandatory yeah. yeah it's a mandatory thing people see self care as something that they are supposed to do once they are tired um it's like the drink you have after the game is over no 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 it's the nutrition you have before the game starts mhm mm so yeah. true so true yeah what what kind of what kind of suggestions would you have as far as daily habits that could get somebody going in that direction if they're not comfortable <laughs> or they're not used yeah. to doing that well, there. See, we have we talk. You know, by the way, I'm giving this advice, and and I think you know Chris very well. And and I I want to say one thing. I'm not perfect, right? I have things that we deal with on a, on a daily basis. I have things that I get, go out of track with. But one thing I always say, say to people is this: um, a ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what the ship is for. So some habits can be very detrimental. For example, um, on a regular basis. Um, what are you doing to calm your mind? It can be meditation, it can be visualization. Um, journaling is a powerful habit, habit. I teach a system called the good night journal system, something that lets you sleep very peacefully and powerfully before, before you go to bed. And I think uh, another thing that I'm actually recommending, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching client. His name is Dr. Shiv Kumar. He's the uh, managing director of the Indian public school. Um, so he was having a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me a few, few weeks ago. And he was telling me, Vishal, what can I do right now in this time of, uncertainty you know i'm taking care good good care of myself i'm listening to the leadership audio program you sent me what else can i do and i told him very simple you start calling five people a day from today no text no scheduling directly call it can be a staff member it can be a relative can be a friend and all you do is you call them no agenda you don't have any agenda you're not expecting anything from them you call them and you say hey just wanted to call you and see how you're doing in this time um, and you give them certainty powerful word you give them certain you don't talk about oh my god this lockdown or oh my god this problem in the in the political um you know part in the country you don't talk about all that you give them certainty and you end with the call with these two th thoughts number one you say hey if there is anything i can do for you i want you to know you can count on me and i also want you to know if there is anything i need i can count on you right and they say yeah I say great awesome thank you and I told Dr. Shiv, imagine you make calls like this for 21 days. That's 105 people that you have touched. And guess what? After every phone call, you feel better. You feel better. Because these days, um, because I coach a lot of corporate professionals and entrepreneurs, people don't make calls until they need something, right? And I often tell people, if you only call people when you need something from them, it's a matter of time before they start, you know, stop taking your calls. So it's about investing in the relationship, calling and reaching out. Just something you do to me. Sometimes, sometimes I reach out, hey, Chris, do you need anything? We have mm -hmm. a quick message. And I think that relationship is something that can give people a lot of hope um, and a lot of power. So yeah, going back, so you know, health habits, journaling, listening to some positive, writing down your goals, visiting your purpose, and reaching out to people. And even when the times are all right, right? You can do the same things even then. And I think it's it's a matter of and I think it's a it, it's a quote from Tony Robbins who said um, there is only one thing that makes a man happy and that's progress. Mm -hmm. What did you do in the last twenty four hours to make progress in your life in your spirituality? What did you do in the last twenty four hours to make a progress in your health? What did you and it's not just watching videos. You know you can watch videos of somebody running, but that doesn't mean you ran. Yep. You, know, you can watch the video of somebody doing meditation, but that doesn't mean you meditated. So. I think um, every single day I have a you know habit tracker system that I teach my coaching clients and the mastermind members. But if you have four to five things that you um, identify and do them on a daily basis, it's going to give a lot of confidence. Yeah. What are some of those things? I believe confidence comes from evidence. Um, confidence comes from evidence. It's something I teach in the, in the program. But I ask people all the time, um, do something today for which you're going to have an evidence tomorrow that you had a good yesterday. Ooh. You know, people often talk about this thing, right, Chris, that you can't change your past. Fuck wrong. You can. I'll tell you how. You change your, you change today, you make a better today, and tomorrow 
today's today is our yesterday right so right. you change enough today's and then you change the last week a week from now and now you have better evidence that last week i could live a powerfully now you have more confidence and it it's like a snowball effect you start yeah. a small, small snowball it gets bigger and bigger so it's it's individual um you know customized thing uh, chris you know depends on what are the things that people do for me i have seen that if i if i wake up if i do my prayer in the morning and if i take 4 liters of water every single day and if i make enough calls if i touch base with my friends you know i have a good day i mean i have my practices of public speaking i have coaching clients and all that all those preparations and business stuff but somewhere i've seen if i take good care of my prayer and my physical power everything else falls into the place for me so that's me that's, right that's powerful that's so true though i mean i tell people a, a similar way of looking at it. i tell people mm -hmm. um will i be happy with this decision tomorrow so I tell right. people like if they're gonna go eat something sweet or they're gonna go drink something or they're gonna go purchase something, just ask right. it from the perspective of tomorrow, am I going to be happy with this decision tomorrow? Because most mm. of us, that's the, that's the power I teach of living in the tomorrow. Like, okay, if you could see the, the results of your action today and you change it mm. today and you catch yourself enough times, like you just said, you start building on that confidence. You start, you start feeling right. better. And like you said, in a way you rewrite your past because now you're just mostly focused on your future, right? Yeah, because I think most often, Chris, what, what happens, I'll give you an example of public speaking. Let's say somebody fails in a presentation, right? Uh, or gives a horrible presentation. What they do is that next time they're going to give a presentation, guess what they're thinking about? The last failed presentation. Oh, and yeah. they are actually, they're reviewing that movie inside the head. Oh my God, last time I failed, last time I failed, last time I failed. Maybe I'm going to fail again. So may, they're making a future affirmation based on the last past failure. And now because of that, their confidence is going to go up or down, absolutely down. And now they fail in the presentation one more time. They are, they are scared or they are not able to make that confidence connection. Or maybe they forget their points in the middle of the presentation. Or maybe they are speaking, 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 but they're not able to make that impact. They, they forget their body language. And now their presentation ends and they, they say, I told myself, I told you. They look in the mirror and say, I told you I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. And now they're creating evidences of failure failure mm. all they have to do is remember a past good presentation or a past time they actually went to a woman and actually spoke nicely and the woman responded well because the more amount of positive evidences you flood your mind with the more amount of positive evidences you're going to create today and then tomorrow that builds up and i think that's a cycle and that's why the value of a coach is so important chris here's what i believe mm -hmm. there are three levels of people that there are one preach, person preach, of preach. misery yeah person of misery somebody who's like self-loathing nothing's gonna happen negativity i mean you can't stay with them for more than two minutes second level is mediocrity these are people who are happy and they go through the books they they buy a lot of audio programs they have 500 apps on their phone they go to the youtube videos they watch the guru videos the sadhu baba videos all the spiritual guru videos they also go to some workshops but they don't have a coach to hold them accountable right yeah so they they, are, they they live a life of mediocrity and the third level is what i call the life of mastery these people have mentors they understand that you can't learn football just by watching football videos you can't learn football just by going to a workshop or, on football you need somebody to hold you accountable somebody to show you the vision to help you clarify their vision somebody who can give you the strategies the mindset the skill set the energy the environment and and those are the people who become masters so i believe in mentorship and that's why i invest so highly in myself and because of that i don't have any problem you know telling my fee you know i'm not a cheap guy i uh, you know it's 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 a lot of money to get into my program especially the balanced life mastermind you know it's 25 lakhs rupees to just hire me for a one-on-one -on -one consulting day for one day and the reason i can do that is because when i meet people face to face or even on a phone call i don't bullshit. i'm not giving them theory I'm just telling them the five percent information that's going to make 99 percent change in their lives so i think that's the value of transformation versus information mm, wow i love that. that's powerful i'm going to go back and listen to that myself because of course i'm always learning as well but it's it's so funny right. because you talked about you talked about those different stages and it's the same thing i jumped off and i got this book great right? book great the book the, the, um, the it, upper limit right that's yeah that's the the upper talks about. and then we talked yeah. about your zone of excellence or your zone of excellence 
Mm. Your zone of genius. And I thought for me, I have li- I actually bought that book on an audio and I listened yeah. to it three or four times. I bought the book so I could study it. And it's just like, it's so amazing because in my look, when I look back on my life, my 26 right. year career as a director of operations, that was my zone of excellence. I'm an excellent leader. I love leading, love right. tying people together. love working for the corporation. Yeah. But it was my zone of genius. My genius is that I could sit here in front of a camera for 10 hours and talk to right. people and make sure that they're motivated and they're inspired. And I can go on Facebook and type them. And people say, how do you do that? I'm like, it's just, that's my gift. And that's why I always mm. encourage people to find what their natural gifts are. What, mm. what do you say to that, Michelle, if people don't know what their gifts are, if they're, if they're constantly struggling to figure out what it is that, that can, they can do for 10 hours a day? You need a guide, not Google. Guide versus Google. Most people go to Google and type how to find my purpose. How does Google fucking know about your purpose? Not at all, right? You need somebody who can walk you through. So, for example, in one of the exercises, I think you do that too for your clients, is one of the things I do inside the Balanced Life Mastermind is I walk people through a template to find their purpose and find their gifts. And sometimes if you don't know, a quick thing to do is go to people and ask people, you know, and it should not be your spouse because they're too close to you. Their opinion is going to be biased. <laughs> so you go to people who really care for you, but who don't have any specific attachment, direct attachment toward your your growth. Actually, um, Michelle, I want to interrupt you for just a second because you just said something really magnificent. You said, uh-huh. don't listen to your spouse. And I just want to yeah. interrupt that before I forget it. Either way, whether your spouse thinks you're awesome at everything you do right. or your spouse has zero support for you, do not listen yeah. to them either way. Just do what you need to do. I just want to make sure I clarify that because that's such a powerful statement. And so many people right. are like, oh, well, my spouse doesn't think I could do that. Well, fuck your spouse. I'm sorry. Right. Your spouse isn't the fucking perfect person in the world. Don't have all their shit together. And if it makes sense to you and you want to do it, then do it. And if they don't like it, then get the fuck out. Ooh, yeah, perfect. yeah. Greatness. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but I just want to make sure that, 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 No, uh, this is all good. Yeah. That everybody saw that everybody heard that because, like, oh, well, my best friend thinks that's a stupid idea. Well, maybe your best friend isn't fucking smart. I tell right. it to people, they're like, they just sit there and they go, they're like, hmm. what makes your friend smart? What makes your friend the best person to decide what your future is? Well, you know, they yeah. have a job and they got a good relationship and you know they seem pretty happy. They seem pretty happy. That's an assumption. You're making an assumption about somebody's happiness and you're taking life fucking decisions about somebody you know for what two years, 12 years, 10 years, 20 mm. years. Listen to your heart, people. That's what's gonna get you through. Sorry. And they don't probably have they don't have any bad intention. Their intention is pure probably to help you because they don't want you to see you they don't want to see you in hurt they don't want to harm you they want you to be safe right they also but at the same because they leave them it leaves them behind and it makes them feel like shit. true at times yeah your success can be a threat to them but at the same time i think see i'll give an example see what most people know you know know about me is that i'm a professional speaker i'm the highest paid speaker in india in the entire country but what most people don't know about me chris is that's not how i was born see many people think i was born in a poor family no I was born in a rich family. No, I was born in a family that's worse than poor. I was born in middle class family. Middle class is worse than poverty. Anything big is fine. Anything small is fine. Is the middle that fucks everybody up, right? So I was born in a middle class family. So growing up, I had some dreams. You know, I found pretty early about my purpose in life that I wanted to, you know, do something with communication, but I was a terrible communicator. I, I had a stutter. I had low self image. I studied in a Bengali medium government school. So growing up, when I shared my dreams with other people, they couldn't see the vision because, you know, you showed the book, the B- big leap, mm-hmm. they had their upper limit. They couldn't see me anything bigger than their social conditioning. But that's when I started having mentors and coaches who are way ahead of me. Somebody who has seen way far ahead in the game about the industry, about life and I started going to different people who not only were successful and popular but somebody who had depth and I think that's a mistake many people do Chris Some, sometimes we go to these people who are just running Facebook ads and all that we go to them because they have 25,000 likes and I have likes and subscribers and all that and thousands of people follow me but you go to somebody you feel connected with instead of feeling just because mm-hmm. you're going to them because of their popularity because those are the people who are going to tell you the truth that hurts instead of telling you a lie that makes you feel good in the moment. So going back to the gift thing, you, you go to people who have found their gift and you know be willing to submit. See, here is the thing. I don't know about anybody's religious belief. You can read the Bible. I read the Bhagavad Gita, but Bhagavad Gita is not a religious book. It's a spiritual and management uh, manual. But even though I can mug up the 700 and whatever verses and the slokas, 
But even if I, you know, what's better than that, Chris, is to actually take five slokes or five verses and apply them and integrate in your life, right? It's Amen. the integration. It's Amen. integration. Amen. So it's the integration that actually changes everything for you. So, you know, I know people who can just mug up and just recite the slokas from Bhagavad Gita and they, and, and they, and they abuse in a temple or in a church. I don't see that connection. And I'm not talking about using F words. I'm talking about them abusing, you know, the guy, the cab driver, because they're charging a little bit more because they don't mm -hmm. integrate that thing. So for me, that integration is very important. So when you see somebody who has the alignment, that integration, somebody who's living their gift, you go to them and submit your surrender, your ego. You know, we, I have a big ego sometimes because I'm an arrogant guy at times. And that's why when I went to my mentor, I had to submit my, I had to surrender my ego and say, tell me what I need to learn, not what I want to learn. And he taught me, he taught me about social conditioning and how I can be a sovereign individual. He taught me the habits. He taught, he told me not to read the general books. He taught me to read the books that give me the intent, not the, just the content. He told me read books that are not just thick, but books that are depth, in a book, book that have depth. And I started going through that and I started achieving my own transformation. You know, so often people have, Chris, microwave mentality. Ah. They want the transformation <clears throat> in the next 30 seconds, three minutes. And you see ads like that, become a millionaire speaker in one day or, or you know, achieve this in 30 seconds or whatever. This is a process. And I tell people all the time, when you see, when you follow the process, you're going to see the pros progress because Rome was not built in a day and it's time for you to show up in a powerful way. So that's what I feel that people have to go to, you know, surround yourself with the right people, have a coach, have a mentor to find your gift. And once somebody tells you what your gift is, apply, apply. Don't just keep it, say, hey, yeah, I got it, I got it, got it, what else? What's advanced, what's advanced? No, it's it's something new. If you, um, if you read the book, The Slight Edge, I don't know if you have read the book. Um, hmm. Yeah, it talks about the, the three edge? levels of life, slight, the slight edge. Okay. Yeah. So the author actually has uh, a different coaching program I was a part of, and he talks about three levels of life, suicidal, satisfactory, and successful. And he says that if you do some basic stuff every day, you will move from suicidal to satisfactory. And then he says that many people think that from to, to move from satisfactory to successful, you have to do something different. He said, no fucking way. If you do the same exact basis, basic stuff every day for years, you are going to move from the satisfactory to the successful. Most people don't have that patience. They don't have the patience. They give up too soon. They want something new, new tricks, new accountability, new app, new coach, new mentor, new training. And then, oh my God, why doesn't my life change? The same problems they had in 2018 are the same problem they had in 2019. And the same problem they still have in 2020 because is the calendar dates change, but the problems still arise because they're not having the new problems because they're not upgrading themselves. I think it's, it's time for people to, to let go. Let it go. Let go of the old problems and embrace some new ones. <laughs> Never heard you sing. Yeah, I'm a good one. Sing a sing a sing a little bit more. No, no, no. I'll I'll tell you a poem toward the end of the call. But yeah, I love the Let It Go song. Like, damn, right? you have a good voice. I was like, holy shit, check him out. Yes. I'll yes. sing Elvis if you sing if you sing if you sing Air Supply. <laughs> <laughs> I listen I'm to a lot of you know, I'm so lost without you. See, I can't sing. I, I, I listen to a lot of in the end, you know, the, the Linkin Park songs. In the end, it doesn't yeah. even matter. Yeah. Ooh, uh, serenading yeah. on the kick on the raw and unscripted show. <laughs> oh man. Hey, um, so something I've been dealing with with some people re recently. Yeah. Um, something that's common. And by the way, you're dropping some serious truth bombs. I usually write notes, but I've written a page of notes. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Cause I love the fact that you just said, when you follow the process, you find your progress, right? Mm, mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you do, um, as people are developing their confidence? And I found that mm -hmm. some people, some people will, will think that they have confidence, but they have arrogance. So they think yeah. that by they get, they get mis mis um, uh, misunderstood from a servant as assertiveness to aggressiveness. Talk to us about how they go, how we can take somebody who is perhaps arrogant and falsely confident or somebody who doesn't have confidence and faces rejection. How can either one of those people like just get to true confidence? What does that feel like? What does that look like? I've experienced yeah, sure. people, um, but I'm interested in seeing what your take on that is when you, when you really yeah. have confidence. 
Yeah, that's a beautiful question. And what my answer is going to be my look, Chris, you know that it goes without saying for you, but for the audience, my trainings are built from real world in the trenches, real business battlefield experience. I don't teach anything from books. I'm teaching from real life experience. And one thing I see all the time is people have this this nervousness before presentation or the nervousness about being themselves. And they they have, you know, deplorable they live in a deplorable condition in their mindset in their spirituality or in their financial life as well because they are not agile you know they, they are reticent they 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 don't know how to show up for themselves and i was just having a conversation i was just doing the confident speaker live workshop a couple of months ago and people asked me this question and this is a you know program that has a lot of leadership people you know vice presidents and all that and this is the only program where where I open some spots for the Balanced Life Mastermind too. And people ask me, Vishal, how do I overcome this nervousness that I have? Or how do I go from low confidence to real confidence level? And I give them this simple formula and I want to give the same thing to your audience, FOTA, F-O-T-A. Focus on the audience, not on yourself. F-O-T-A, focus on the audience. Most often when people have this nervousness or they don't have too much confidence about themselves, it comes from too much of self-consciousness and self-awareness is very good, but not too self-consciousness. They're thinking about their teeth, what's, you know, how am I looking and all that. But when you come from a place of service, because I often tell people all the time, <clears throat> it's hard, truth bomb coming, it's hard to be nervous when your heart is on service. It's hard to be nervous when your heart is on service. So you got to serve people. I think uh, oftentimes and about the arrogant stuff, sometimes people do come across as arrogant, even they are not uh, oftentimes. It's, it's just a matter of connection. And I think it comes down to, to the personality type as well. If you know the DISC personality, DISC, many people who are in the D personality, for example, I'm a mixture of D and I. Uh, they come across because they speak fast. They they are result oriented, driven. They come across as arrogant, but I think it's a it's it's about your personality. Yeah. Um, I remember Michael Burt once told me, "Insecure people find confident people arrogant." Oh yeah, ooh, that's a great <laughs> one. Insecure yeah. people find confident people arrogant. Yeah. Damn, I love that. Shakalaka, bomb bomb today, not boom boom. Shaka pow pow. <laughs> kick ass yes. raw and unscripted yes. shit right here Ooh, absolutely nice um damn i was all caught up in that and forgot what my next question was gonna be yeah um so, so just see. just a little piggybacking on the last point um so it's it's many people think um while, while you gather the next question many people think that i just have to practice 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 i think practice is good chris but i often tell people what if what if you're practicing the wrong stuff in that mm -hmm. case you're getting better in the wrong direction. You're getting better in the wrong direction. So I tell people, find the right methods. It's not about randomly practicing anything. It's about it's about doing the right thing. If you're doing the exercise in the wrong way, you're gonna fuck up your body. Discipline. Same way if you're doing the right discipline, at the same time, the discipline has to be right. And look, I know this, if, if only random information could make people successful, everybody would be skinny, rich and happy. Mm -hmm. So you need the right information. That's why, People need coaches. People need personal trainers. If anybody could be, it's not just the information. Otherwise, I can find all the fitness information from Google or from book. But when I have a personal trainer telling me, go, man, one more, one more push up. Come on. Mm -hmm. Don't do it this way. Don't make this space. Make a little bit more space. Don't do this. Hold on. Wait for 30 seconds before you go for the next exercise. That's called the right direction. It's the slight edge. When you make small, small edges, small, small shifts over a period of time, you become unrecognizable. Because that's when people say, oh, my God, who is he? Because that's when people say, I don't know who he is, but he's a somebody. I don't know what he does, but he does something. I don't know what his name is, but I want to make sure he knows my name. And that's when you keep, you know, come hell or high water. You, you practice for sure, but you need the right people. I can't stress this point enough. You need the right people around you. Because sometimes people think, I'll do that later on. No, you need the right people to be alive and kicking to make sure that you don't feel remorseful, you know, later on. Most people feel remorseful because they realize they, they wasted a lot of time just, just trying instead of training. And that's another question I want to ask people. You know, how much time are you spending trying instead of training? Stop yeah. trying. Start training. 
Ooh, I love that. You know, I remember my, well, my question was, thank you. <clears throat> I get caught up in, in catchy <laughs> words and my brain just goes, ooh, ooh, and I have to see it. And then also yeah. my brain goes, hey, what was that question? What was that question? <laughs> but you, you, we it kind of, we've kind of danced around it a little bit in talking about self-confidence, right. um, talking about arrogance versus confidence and things of that nature. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when people come to me, they're like, you know, I'm afraid of X. And I usually, usually can deduce it down to the fear of judgment. You know, like when you talk right. about being a, a professional speaker, I get people all the time. I haven't spoke on stage since 2016, which is kind of freaky. I have not, I was speaking every single year, like four or five times a year. And I've not spoke due to my son, Jackson, just for transparency reasons. I had to give right. up something. So that was one of them, you know that. Um, but when people are like, you make it look so easy. And I'm like, well, number one, it's a lot easier for me now because before I was so worried about what people were going to say about me, what I was dressed like, how I was looking, right. because I felt inauthentic. I felt incongruent getting up there as a suit and tie speaker. Yeah. And then add to that. And all of a sudden I became kick ass and I started wearing this stuff and like just being me. And that was another thing. I stopped caring so much about other people, but then I was still worried about like, okay, what are they thinking about this guy with a bandana? Do they think he's going to you know, start dropping F-bombs? And I wouldn't. But then the, the the masterpiece of it all was getting in touch with Glenn Morshower and learning how to just speak from the heart, just to speak from flow. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about that in 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 a sense of of overcoming our our fear of rejection, our fear of judgment. Yeah. Also, just getting into flow. I mean, I think we talked about like you just said. I, yeah. I have an analogy that's similar to what you just said. It's like you can climb, you can be climbing and making progress, but if your ladder is against the wrong building, aka you're climbing for the wrong yeah. thing, then guess what? When you get to the top, you're going to look around and go, "Wow." And when I did that, when I became, you know, started getting in leadership and started becoming a director and I was like, okay, I want to become the president of the company. And I started my, I started getting taller and taller. I was taking the leadership courses and I was like, yeah, yeah. And I got to the top and I was like, do I really want to do that? Do I really right. want all that stress? Do I really want, is that what, and I'm like, no. And I just went down the ladder, took my ladder right. and went over here and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up that side of the building. Talk to us a little bit about that from your perspective and your training. I think uh, I think speaking from a flow comes from knowing that you can handle any situation. It's a level of confidence. Um, many people think that they have to prepare a lot. That, so you know they prepare writing, writing, writing. They write their speeches. It's a wrong way to go about it. And some people are very good at spontaneous speaking. People like you and me, um, and we can do that. I think the sweet spot is where you have preparation, but at the same time spontaneity. In order for you to smash your goals as a speaker, whether you are a professional speaker or you're a project manager, CEO, vice president, IT professional, finance guy, HR, whatever in the office, you got to understand that you, you should have a structure in your mind, but your speech should not, or presentation should not sound scripted. It should sound spontaneous. People don't want presentation delivered by an expert. They want a conversation with a friend from the stage, right? Ooh, so you... That. Right. So in because we detest formal presentation, I've heard so many speakers who come on stage or in the office, in the meeting room. Sometimes when I have to provide feedback and coaching, I, I go to client's office to just see. They sound so formal, man. They are like they are like all cool until the meeting room. Right. So until 2.30 p.m., they're all cool. They're laughing. They're smiling. They're sharing the food. They are all fine. But when the 2.30 meeting happens, they yeah. don't smile. They've become this formal version of themselves. And everybody loathes that. No, nobody likes that. Now, the only way to enhance and refine that is to ask yourself why. You know, it's, it's about challenging the belief system. I, I believe one thing, Chris. You can't, you know, you can't put a new system until you erase the existing one that's actually running right now. It's like the CD thing. You know, you if, if there is a song playing, you can't put another CD drive into that. You have to take the existing one out and make space for a new one. So I often work with people and um, I find, you know, why they become this this robotic version of themselves or why they have. Where did they learn this rejection stuff in the first place? Oftentimes, not to my surprise, but oftentimes I find is it comes from their relationship with their father, especially I'm talking to men right now, it's their relationship with their father that they had, because most times, especially in Indian culture and anywhere else, actually, the father figure is very dominant, very you know criticizing. So we live with this hope of getting this seal of approval from the father. And then we do everything in our power to impress that person who never becomes impressed. And then we follow everything to a T, but more than expected, we do everything off the charts and we are still not happy because we are actually, we have become 
an approval seeking machine approval seeking machine and that's why mm -hmm. before buying something you know that i always wanted to buy I, I feel what will that person think what will my wife think what will my father think what will my child think so they forget themselves and i think that's where the rejection thing comes up so when you when you look at your overall life chris um talking to the you know all the audience members when you look at your life and understand not just in your business not just in your speaking not just in your career but where else are you seeking approval when you when you let let it go when you let it mm. go you know you're going to feel that power all the time you're not you're not begging for the audience's approval anymore you don't you're not begging for their appreciation anymore because you are geared to lead them i tell people all the time you never put your audience on a pedestal why here is why because when you put somebody on a pedestal the only way for them to look at you is by looking down mm -hmm. So hey, you, man, you don't, I love that. Yeah, you don't you don't put anybody on a pedestal in your mind. You're going to serve, and I tell people all the time: have an affirmation, maybe before a presentation, stretch a bit, and we we teach an entire system and formula inside our program in the Balanced Life Mastermind to really make them unstoppably confident to to have a battle-proof mindset because it's so important. And mindset is not just about positive thinking; it's your psychology, it's your way of thinking. I I don't believe in positive thinking. I believe in powerful thinking. I believe in productive thinking. Mm -hmm. When my house yes. is on fire, I don't need positive thinking. I need powerful thinking. I need to get my ass out with my laptop and my phone and my family members. Not in that specific order. In that me. order. But in that order. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> in that order. That's you. Yeah. The <laughs> family. That's you. You're going to burn. Glad my family yeah. members are not on this podcast right now. But <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so you can have powerful it. thinking. So before a presentation, have an affirmation. Tell yourself, you know, I believe in myself. I'm going to give a great presentation. Because when you change your mindset game, when you change the game inside your ear, you know, inside your head, between your ears, people can see that. They're going to see a new version of you. And they're going to say, man, what happened to him? You know, what, what drugs is he on? Because, mm -hmm. because he's actually a changed version. And it is absolutely po possible. It is possible over time, but not overnight. So, yeah absolutely so the same thing you know you don't you don't want a life of misery or mediocrity you want a life of mastery do what masters do keep learning keep growing i mean you were, you were telling me the other day about your conversation with glenn moore shower who's a hollywood actor right mm -hmm. and uh, and he, this guy is still learning right that's why he's humble enough to listen to the other people on the show i mean if yeah. you if you just see anybody even even people like you you go to people you know different masterminds and coaches. I have coaches on my own because we understand I'm smart enough to know I'm not the smartest guy. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not the smartest guy. That's why, yeah, that's why I'm developing. And I see people just because they are, they have a lot of age or they're because they're aging, aging or just because they have, um, you know, 12, 13, 15, 25 years of experience, they think they know it all. I often tell people change happens when your pain becomes bigger than your ego. Change happens when your pain becomes bigger than your ego. Most people, they have big ego. They have good pain, but bigger ego. That's why change never happens. They are same at the age of 35. They are same at the age of 45. And they die with regrets and remorse and pain that they cannot do control Z on a laptop. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so true. I mean, I, that's the whole thing I teach is about finding that pain. When you have enough pain, then you yeah. have enough pressure. I mean, that Tony Robbins says that so eloquently in... Um, uh, Waking a giant within. That was one Personal of the power when, I got, when I got up, when I read that book and it was like, that's what made me. And I started the show off and I talked to you guys out there about this is your self-created crap. When I read yeah. Awaken the Giant Within, it was like, you know, pain versus pleasure. You do things for either reason you to avoid pain and to gain pleasure, gain pleasure. Um, one thing I want to respond more for, more for avoiding pain than the pleasure. Yeah. Because yeah. The power of the pain is bigger than the, you know, getting the pleasure. The example I give is what would you have some, you know, which opportunity would you like earning five thousand dollars or to stop somebody from stealing five thousand dollars from you <laughs> mm -hmm. so right? that's we, important perspective too we're talking yeah. about perspective shifts one right. thing i want to i want to i want to pick your mind because i want to be respectful just for the list the viewers out there listeners out there um it is like midnight or later over there what time is it over there cool, man it's three in the morning right now but i wanted to jump on on this call you know oftentimes i have coaching calls and all that from outside india so Totally cool, man. I, I can stay for a few minutes more. No problem yeah. at all. all well, good. I, what I want, what I want to do is, yeah. You may have heard me start off the show talking about this is going to be a time for for people to be resourceful. This is going to be a time for yeah. People to step up and and become leaders and become resourceful and become ingenuitive and and think of different things. 
talk to us and give us your insight on how people who have not been in a position of leadership before, mm -hmm. either within their family or within their position, can now start to find a, somehow either a, a leadership position within their family or a co-leadership position within their family to really take this time to become an entrepreneur. Because I think I'm, I'm almost certain that this is going to become what I think they've coined right now, the gig economy. Like for me, I'll do coaching, I'll do speaking, I'll do consulting. I may fucking drive for Uber. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's going to be certain gigs that we're all going to have to do. So I, I really want to impress upon the people watching this and listening to this that you know, when you, when you think about all the technology and you think about all the stuff that has been created, you know, you yeah. think about the microwave, you think about all the different stuff, the generation Z that's coming up, the latest generation, they don't even know what a fucking library is. They don't even know what a dial phone is. They don't even, they don't even know those things, but for the people that are stuck in the old mindset, what recommendations do you have for them to, to get resourceful, to become an entrepreneur, to, to dig deep and to create their own service or their own product to get them out of the situation and get them started today? I think first of all, people have to understand what entrepreneurship is all about. It's not about opening some website. It's not about just going Facebook live. It's not about just being saying that I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I'm a millionaire, this, that. Understand this definition that I was, I heard many years from Tia Abraker. He said, um, an entrepreneur is somebody who solves a problem for people at a profit. Three Ps, solve a problem for people at a profit. If you don't solve a problem, you're not an entrepreneur. If you don't solve a problem for people, you're not an entrepreneur. And if you don't solve a problem for people for profit, you're still not an entrepreneur. So most people only think about the profit in the beginning. They don't think about actually the problem that they're going to solve. So if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, that's an awesome thing. Take a piece of paper or go to a mentor and ask yourself, what problems am I eligible to solve? I love this answer or this question that David Averin, um, author of the book visibility marketing and my friend your friend you know asked me once he said what topics have you earned the right to talk about from stage earn the right not not something that you have read in a book about earn the right i don't talk about health i don't talk about waking up early you know i'm good at in those areas but i'm not an expert i talk about things that i'm living i'm like i said it's not about speaking from the books so look at your life you know somebody if they want to be an entrepreneur at the, at the age of you know, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, doesn't matter. When, ask yourself, what problems can you solve? And, and who has those problems? And how do you reach them? And how do you present your um, proposal in a way that they say yes? You know, I'm going to give, give um, four step simple formula right now for people to, to really do that. Um, and it's, it's the same in general presentations in, you know, that I teach people as well. Very simple formula. First of all, you customize to co connect. Number one, customize to connect, meaning you customize how you talk about your problems. Um, my friend Dove Gordon talks about that people pay attention to two things. Number one, a problem they have and don't, and, uh, don't want, and a result they want and don't have. So in your communication, talk about a problem or talk about a result. So that's how you customize to connect. Number two, you organize to open minds. It's not about just blabbering. You have to organize your content in the right way. So if you're talking on a Facebook Live or face-to-face -face or Zoom calls or phone calls or you know, blog articles or when the things become right, you know, you're meeting face-to-face, -face, you got to organize to open minds. You don't, you don't talk just to the left brain but also the right brain. You know, we can go on and on about this, but you have to use humor, personal story, credibility to open mind. Number three, you personalize to persuade. How can you personalize the entire content to make sure that you are creating a persuasion? So we spoke about organize to connect, uh, customize to connect, organize to open mind, personalize to persuade, and then picturize to penetrate. You create powerful pictures in the minds of the audience, not just visual pictures, but the you know, words, you, you wor use words in such a manner that people can visualize what's exactly what's going to happen in their life if they don't take action right now. And it's all about WIIFM, what's in it for me. Tell people what you can do for them, how they can get benefit from that, and what it costs them not to get it. I often talk about it, ROI versus COI. Everybody talks about ROI. This is your return on investment. Talk about the COI, cost of inaction, cost mm. of inaction right don't just talk about here is if you do this this is the benefit talk about if you don't do this this is where you're gonna fuck up one month from now two months from now 10 years from now that's how you become a great entrepreneur because chris i was not born as a great entrepreneur i was not born as an entrepreneur nobody in my family was an entrepreneur ever right so i had to learn the skills 
to be a speaker, to be a coach. And now Fortune 500 companies, I've, I've been invited by Microsoft, Cisco, Nokia, different companies to really consult and speak and train. And even the top level CEOs, in, any top level CEO in India right now, they come to my program, the top level politicians, doctor, lawyers, and general IT professionals. It's, I did not have the skills. I had to develop that. I, I was made fun of in my school. I was bullied in my school, not by students, but by a teacher for years and years and years. Wow. Right? He used to call me names, he used to call me son of a bitch. It all happened in my school days. So you can imagine the level of low self-esteem I had. And if I had, and if I can go from there till here, and if I'm still moving forward, still believing in myself, anybody can do that. If you, if you have the right people around you, if you have the right vision, the strategy, the skills, the mindset, and the energy, anything is possible. So yeah, absolutely. Solve people's problem for a profit. Ooh, I love that. I took, I took that down. Um, cost of inaction versus ROI. I love that COI. I uh, wrote down yeah. your um, customize to connect, organize to open minds, personalize to persuade and picturize to penetrate. So yeah. I've been taking notes, ladies and gentlemen, because That's I absorb this stuff. I mean, this is one of the gifts that I get from interviewing these people. If I get to do <laughs> it right here, it's like pumped into my brain, all this awesome fucking kick ass shit. And it's mm -hmm. coming to you guys for free, for free. All you have to do is take action. That's what we keep talking about in this program right. is taking action. You can listen and you can get shelf help and you can get all that other shit. I can I can't count. I mean, me personally, I me mean, talk about being authentic. I can't yeah. count how many different programs I've gone to and been so excited. And even, you know, to the point where I would go over the weekend and I would go back to my day job on Monday. And then by Wednesday, I was like, okay, by next weekend, I'm going to do these things. But then by Wednesday, I was like, it started fading away. And then I started doing some research and I found out that within three days of learning something, if you don't start to apply it and better yet, start to teach it to somebody else, if you don't do that, it's going to go away. You remember like 20% of it at that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, but one of my last yeah. questions for you, sir, and because you've been dropping massive, massive dope information here is yeah. what is going to be your legacy? What is keeping you unstoppable? And yeah. what is your biggest fear? My and legacy, unstoppable and fear. Mm, my legacy is my whole lifetime goal is to impact 100 crore people in my lifetime before I die positively, to live more, with more confidence, more power, more clarity, to connect with people in a better way. Uh, that's my, my mission in life, in my lifetime. And I, I believe in biohacking. I believe, Christopher, I'm going to be living for 150 years, 150 years. That's my goal in my lifetime, right? Because I remember Robin once told me, Robin Sharma, he said that if you want to impact, don't die. <laughs> don't die, right? Because <laughs> if you die, your, your legacy... Yeah. Right. So you, you die. So I, I want to live. That's why I'm taking better care of myself about my fear. Um, absolutely. Sometimes one of my fear, I'll tell you, you know, no bullshit. My biggest fear is actually dying with a lot of things undone. And it might probably happen, but I want those undone things to be minute and small, impactful. Uh, and that's why every single day I wake up, I have this, this, um, this hunger, even though you know, we do financially good. Well, I don't really have to work to really do that anymore. But for me, it's not about money anymore. Uh, I remember Gary Vaynerchuk once talked about it. He said, once you make enough money, it's not about how much you make. It's about how you make that money. Right. Yeah. So so for me right now, when I when I see the Balanced Life Mastermind members win bigger and they, you know, have this, they, they get a promotion, they're making more money, but are are they are having more intimacy in their relationship. They're actually more closer to the children. They're actually having more family time. They are, first of all, they're starting something new. Dude, I'll tell you, it lights me up. It's the same feeling I get when I when I go for a run and I have this endorphin rush and the serotonin and all that in my body. You know, I, I love that. And I think I think people have to choose. I think um, most people are confused. And I often tell people, if you confuse, you lose. But when you clarify, your life will multiply. If you, if you confuse, you lose. But when you clarify, your results and life will multiply. And what I mean by multiplication is I know my fear. I'm very clear about that. And every single day I think about it that I should not live or, or I should not end my life with an unlived life. I, mm -hmm. That's my playful out every single day. And, and honestly, uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbow every day. Sometimes I have my bad days and tough days. And you know, I think you remember, I have total transparency about it. Last year, I was going through a very tough phase in my life. And I had a call with you, if you remember. I yep. texted you, hey, I'm having a bad phase in my life. Can you speak with me? Because I feel 
A bold man does not hesitate in reaching out. Yes. A pussy cat does. Mm -hmm. Right. A bold man does not fear in reaching out for help. I, I have, that's why I have mentors. I have friends like you who I reach out to and say, Hey, help me with this. But I know one thing. If somebody gives me one inch, I will run a mile with that because I, I'm an action taker. I don't fuck around. Yep. So for me, that legacy is one thing. And I think another thing for me, the legacy is anybody who follows my journey is going to say one thing. This fucker was consistent. He was a consistent guy, consistently putting out content, writing every single day. People who are in my email list, I send twice in e two emails every single day. I put content on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere else you see. And I don't spend a single rupee on ads. All the people and clients, they find about me organically. They find about me. They refer and all that. It's because I'm putting things on a daily basis, on a consistent basis, because I believe consistency creates mastery. And I am on that journey. That's why I have people around me who inspire me. And Chris, if you allow me, I want to I wanna end because we are just coming to the close with a, with a quick uh, poem. Yeah. Um, Bring it. Called the man. Yeah, called the man in the glass. You can Google it from Peter Dale Wimbrough Senior. Very simple. It inspired me a lot. So I want to just um, give it in, in my last final words. So here is how it goes. The man in the glass. <clears throat> when you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the man has to say. Because it's not your father, your mother, or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts the most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he is with you clear to the end. And you have passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in your glass is your friend. And last paragraph, you may fool the whole world. This is my favorite. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass. But your final reward will be the heartache and tears if you have cheated the man in the glass. Oh. Don't cheat the man in the glass. Mm. Make that person proud and you are going to be living your confident life and your balanced life now. Damn. Ooh, that gave me chills. I love that. I thought it was going to basically what it does is it talks about the same thing I talk about, which is regrets. It's like, you have to, you have to, um, I have a coaching call tonight with somebody tonight. And one of the things that inspired her was the fact that I talk about that. She goes, I don't want any regrets. I'm like, I don't think anybody does. I think what, that's exactly what you're saying. So I think that has to become the pain, the leverage for us to continue moving on. And and I just want to say thank you, Bashal, because you know the 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 knowledge that you've shared today, the insight that you've shared today, the authenticity you've shared today is tremendous. And I really just want you guys out there to really figure out how this applies to you. Yeah. How does this apply to you? How are you going to take action on these particular uh, truth bombs that he has dropped? I have taken mm -hmm. notes to myself. Now I'll take these notes and I'll put them in my journal and I'll say, how can I apply that to myself? How can I share this with myself? I'll make sure that I share it out because as I share it out, I can sit there and say, quote, Bishal Sarkar, blah, blah, blah. Here's what he says. And the more I do it, the more it becomes ingrained in myself and the more it becomes a reminder to myself because Bashal is one of my mentors in my life. One of the people that I yeah, look to when I'm struggling and when I'm like, uh, and he'll be the first person to say, Hey, Chris, you're slacking off. What are you doing here? What are you doing there? You <laughs> guys need to have these people in your life. If your best right. friend, if you go up to your best friend and you're wearing fat jeans and you know, you're sitting there and you look at your best friend, like, how do these jeans look? And your best friend goes, Oh, they look good on you, girl. And they don't. Mm. Then you need a new best friend. You need mm -hmm. a new best friend. You need accountability partners. People are saying right now, like, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'm going to be dead serious with you guys. You can't afford not to necessarily because once, once the economy starts going back up, they've been talking about how coaching is going to be one of the deciding factors and whether people are going to be successful in their jobs and their lives or not. You think about pro football players, you think about pro sports players, you think about like Bashal had said, you know, having personal trainers, things of that nature. Yeah. Somebody needs to sit there and hold you accountable each and every moment to make sure that you take those action steps to make sure that you're accountable. Yeah. I personally still have to have my coaches every once in a while. I go through fits and yeah. spits where I have when I don't. But I can tell you when I did 75 hard last year, that was my obligation to myself that year. I had a coach last year. I had two coaches last year. And I had, um, then I did 75 hard. So I'm constantly pushing myself. And I'm like, okay, I got to do this for myself. And I got a buddy of mine who's doing it now because he told me I was fucking crazy. And now he's on day 41, something like that. Um, 
Yeah, you know who you are. Um, doing a phenomenal job because once you believe in yourself, once you put one foot in front of the other, they'd say, how do you get through 75 days? I'm like, once you get to day 22, it's like, okay, I'm going to get to day 23. I'm going to get to day 24. Any way we look at it, guys, we're going to live our life. And hopefully we're going to live yeah. it in a state of excellence and not a state of misery and complacency and regret. But the only right. person that can do that for you guys is like Bashal said in his poem, look at the mirror. That's your right. accountability. Look in the mirror. Say, is this getting me further or further away from my stated goal? If you have a stated goal mm -hmm. you're about to do something, just ask yourself that question. Is this getting me closer to or further from my stated goal? And then stop yeah. yourself and be accountable. And just don't just say, well, it's today. I'm having a cheat day or I'm having a moment or blah. just stop and don't do it. I can't tell you guys how many different things in my life where I've quit smoking or I quit drinking or quit whatever. And I've had to just say, okay, I just have to make it through this moment. I just have to make it through this moment. I just have to make it through this moment. I have to make it through this hour. I have to make it through this day. I have to make it through this week. And then the sun starts to shine and you start to go, fuck, I am unstoppable, dude. I have it because each and every one of you guys out there has it. I don't care what anybody has said. I don't care what anything is done. I don't care all the shit you've done. Today is a brand new day. And when you put your big girl point pants on or your big boy pants on, whatever the fuck you wear, if you wear a dress of a boy, go for it. Um, or if you wear pants for a girl, I like that. It's good jeans. But anyways, if you, <laughs> if you don't accept responsibility for the facts and the thoughts that go through your mind and the outcomes that you're going to get, then who is, then you're just going to be sitting there 90 years old, 80 years old. And Michelle brought up a great point. Also, we're going to be living longer. You know, I sat there and, and had a conversation with myself when I turned 50, which was last year. And I'm like, damn, you know, average life expectancy is 78. I got 28 years. Oh my God. You know, time's running out. And I started thinking about, I'm like, technological advances, medical advances. I mean, they're making advances so fast now that maybe in 10 years, you're going to live until you're 90. And maybe in 10 years after that, you're going to live until you're 120. And 10 years after that, you're going to live until you're 160. Hopefully, you're obviously in great health and great nutrients and everything. But just think of what it is that your life can become. You could just, you could just barely be getting started. Yeah. No matter where you're at in your life, you could just be barely getting started. So please take the information that myself and Bishal have so graciously shared with you guys today. Take action on them. Reach out to yeah. us. Bashal, what is your contact information before we uh, before we uh, let uh, let the show go? Where, where can people get a hold of you? They can just Google my name and find more. I don't want to send people to any specific page here, you know, because only because, dude. If, if what you have heard so far, you've enjoyed, you know, find more about you, find more about me and you, you know, they can go to my site, bishalsarkar.com, but I, I don't want them to go to any any website of mine. To be honest, Chris, today I want people to fuck going through this, you know, different sites and all that. I want them to take some fucking action if they want to respect us, right? And any, you know, just final th thought. Uh, you spoke about the friend, you know, friend going to a friend and talking. Hey, how am I looking? And they they're lying. One thing I always tell people is this: if your friend circle is not inspiring you to change. It's not a friend circle. It's a suicide spot. It's a suicide spot that you're living in right now. You need the right people. And that's why you've got to be very careful. You've got to be selective about the people that you hang out with. You've got to be selective about the friends. And that's why, Chris, you know, very selective about the people that I allow to join the Balanced Life Mastermind. It's not for everybody. You know, some people come with a big check and say, hey, can I just write you a check? No, it's not going to happen that way. I have to select. You're not buying pizza. You're buying my time. You're buying my experience. You're, I'm giving my decades of knowledge and experience and turning your life around. And, and I think that's why you need the right people around you. And uh, final thought is if you really um, you know, want to discover your big life, if you really envision a bigger life, if you want to you know, take, a, take a leap of faith toward enhancing your mindset, your skill set, your financial life, your capability, I think it's time for you to take a vow today. Take a, you know, take a vow today that it's time for you to stop fucking around. It's time for you to stop just going through content after content and take action. Hire a mentor. Get serious. Double down on yourself. Invest in yourself. Because if you don't invest in yourself, you're wasting yourself. And when you invest in yourself, you're going to find more confidence in yourself. You're going to honor your body. Discipline your mind, nurture your emotions, expand your prosperity, serve the society, and people are gonna see that you're gonna shine, you're gonna be shining your soul on fire. And your next generation is gonna be proud of that. Your current generation is gonna be proud of that. And that's gonna be your fucking legacy. Don't focus yeah. just on currency, focus on leaving a legacy. Mic drop. Bam. Mic drop. Boom. Mike, look, look, I got, where's my, got my mic drop here? Bam. Look at that mic drop. Bam. Damn, my guns used to be bigger. Damn it.
Anyways, <laughs> all right, this is the Raw and Unscripted Show with Christopher Roush and our special guest today, Bishal Sarkar from India at three o'clock in the morning. Bishal, thank you so much, brother, for being here. You are a fucking rock star. You're kick ass. You're thank unstoppable. You. I love you with all my heart, and I cannot wait. Cannot wait. I know this is going to happen. One day we're sharing a stage. One day we're at the same event. We're going to connecting in human. Yes, most definitely. We just got to get through this shitty time in our life, this eventful yeah. time in our life. And I just want to say thank you, brother, for everything. And for you guys out there, make sure you are going to ChristopherRoush.com. C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-R-A-U-S-C-H. ChristopherRoush.com. I love you guys. If you're interested, call me. I want to talk to you. If you're having troubles, if you're down, this is not a coaching plea. This is not anything. It's not a sales gimmick. If you're having trouble and you want to talk to somebody, I've been talking to people for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at a time, making sure people have what they need to make sure that they're unstoppable through this time. All right. I love you guys. Michelle, I will see you later on. And for the rest of you guys, have a kick-ass day.